In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the cumulative principal payment and the cumulative interest payment in cells uh, HC and H7. But first, we'll review the principal payment and the interest payment um, functions, the PPMT and the IPMT. So what we're interested in doing here is finding out how much of my uh, balance remains and how much interest have I paid after 12 payments. So we're just going to put 12 here in cell H3 so that we can reference it in the functions below. So first I want to know what is the principal portion of payment on that 12th payment. So PPMT is the function. Again, I type equals PPM. I hit the tab to select that. And this time I'm not going to be copying any functions. I will not be using any absolute references but we still need to take into account that the annual interest rate needs to be divided by the 12 months because every payment is happening on a monthly basis and that the also the term as well needs to be multiplied by 12. So the per here is the specific payment. Now we're looking at the n per, the total number of payments, and finally the present value, which is the total loan amount. Now we can do the IPMT. Again, the rate divided by 12. The term. And then again, the negative loan value to show that it is an amount owing. The principal paid to date is the cumulative principal paid on a loan between two periods. So let's go ahead and look at this function here with the function arguments. All right, so the first thing we need to do is select the rate. Again, we're going to divide by 12. Here we've got n per, which is the total number of payments, and that's multiplied again by 12. The present value is always the loan amount. The start period, we're going to do the range from the first payment to the 12th payment, so that in that first year, how much of the money that we've paid is it going towards the principal? So that's in cell A12. And the end period here, we'll select cell H3. We need to scroll down. There's one more argument that's required for this function, and that is the type. Our options are either zero, which is at the end of the period, or one, which is at the beginning of the period. We're going to be using zero. Usually you pay the first month after you get the loan. So let's click OK. And here we owe $7,307 and some change. In order to make this value positive, we need to put a negative in front of the function. We can't use a negative here in this function on the present value. It's really important to remember that. Let's also change this to accounting. And while we're at it, we'll set these to accounting as well. Calculate the cumulative interest. So the cumulative interest payment, again, we're looking at that rate divided by 12. Well, the rate divided by 12, we've got the number of terms. The start period, again, we're looking at from the first to the 12th payment. And scroll down in the argument dialog here to enter that zero for type. And let's format that as accounting. And again, it's giving us a negative value. I can tell that because it's in brackets. That's what the accounting negative looks like. So let's put that minus sign just before the name of the function. And so our remaining balance is going to be the amount of our loan minus our principal amounts paid to date. Great, and so that's how you calculate the cumulative principal payments and the cumulative interest payments between two periods. And so if I were to change this now, let's say I wanted to know in the first three years, this is values. So this input payment number can change to whatever makes sense. It will automatically update because these are relative references. They'll all automatically update based on this input. So that's from the first that's the first four years it's giving me the amounts there.